Hello everyone, my name is Chase Steele. I'm a sound designer and an audio educator, and I'm gonna be taking you through getting Strata set up for the first time. So whether you are or are not a Reaper user already, uh, there's gonna be some things that I'll talk about that you definitely wanna be aware of. Um, so don't just skip over it thinking, oh, we're just gonna talk about all these settings and it's gonna be boring. It's not the most exciting stuff to have to discuss, but you really wanna make sure that things are operating uh, smoothly in the way that these Strata collections were designed and intended to, to be used, at least initially. So with that, I'm gonna go and make sure that we have certain plugins installed, that you're aware of those. And then we'll take a look at some of the dependencies uh, as far as Reaper plugins that you may or may not want to uh, want to check and install. You're really gonna wanna make sure you download and get the Strata demo project. It's really um, very generous and it's how much content they give you to play around with. Um, so be sure to head over to the Strata website and grab that, download it. So with that, let's go ahead and kind of get started with this. So there are some Reaper extensions, which are just kind of um, things that are created to integrate alongside of Reaper or with Reaper by third parties that have some additional features. As a, if you are a new Reaper user, you'll find these uh, potentially useful in the long run. But also it's going to be helpful for some of the extensions that are associated with the Strata collections um, or that might be useful for um, WISE. There's a ReWise extension. So two things you may want to have are Reapack. And there's a, you can go to the website, which is just reapack.com right there. You know, not going to explain that too much. But um, it's very thorough how to set up and install these ex this package manager for your system. So basically, any type of um, additional extensions or um, scripts or anything that you uh, have installed from third parties can be managed with this. And then another extension is the SWS extension, which just adds a lot of additional functionality to Reaper that isn't uh, already built in, even though there's already a ton there. So these are just two things to at least be aware of. If you don't have them, maybe look into it, read read up on like some of the things that are contained. They're highly useful, um, and it's part of, or it, we, you know, it's it's used at least to some extent. Some of these um, some of these uh, projects. Let's have a look at some of the dependencies, such as the included uh, plugins that you may want to have installed. If you don't have them installed, the uh, the Strata collections are not going to uh, sound correct because these plugins are part of the license. They're part of how the final design sounds are created and you have access to them, so you should install. So there's essentially three components here. So Enrage, uh, this is part of the licensing. So this is a Boom plugin, which is going to be used quite a bit. So definitely go ahead and install that. Depending on you have Windows or Mac, it's just obviously going to be a little different. I'm not going to, you know, overly explain. It's just a standard installer. So you just have to go through that process. And then you have to get the licenses and move them to your iLock, which is kind of outlined in the documentation if you're having trouble with it. You're also going to want to make sure to install the IEM plugins. These are gonna be extremely important for a lot of the ambience collections. So again, there's an installer here for that. So you just open that up and again, just kind of go through it just like the rest of them. Make sure you have all of these checked and then continue through to do this and hit install. So there's also wise plugins. So that if you're you know, trying to emulate the way you want things to sound, um, inside of WISE later, if you're gonna be moving sounds from a Strata collection into a WISE project, this is obviously gonna have a lot of things in there that you may be familiar with that you can use to uh, for your designs or they will be represented in some of the uh, collection designs. So obviously again, it's just a standard installer. So go ahead, you would wanna go through that and make sure that those are installed before you start using the Strata collections. All right. So because you're going to be working with these projects and creating alternative versions, and there is a particular workflow that is kind of suggested, um, it's, you know, certainly you have free reign to do quite a bit and come up with your own workflows. But because of the nature of these projects, there's some preferences in Reaper that you really should have a look at. Uh, it doesn't matter if you're, you know, have been using Reaper for a long time or if you've never really used it much at all. Um, these are things that you want to at least have uh, a chance to double check inside of your preferences. And, you know, 
ultimately make your own determination, but we're going to kind of show you what is optimal according to the documentation and how strata collections are kind of uh, organized and how they're generally, you know, probably going to be used. So taking a look inside preferences menu, we're going to start with general. So there's going to be a couple of settings here. So first thing is when approaching full undo memory, keep newest undo states, save undo history with project files, and then allow load of undo history. So uh, you could read individually, there's actually um, an explanation inside the window at the bottom if you, you need a better uh, understanding of these, but essentially they all have to do with saving your undo history, keeping the, those or a record of those files so that as you're working with the static collection uh, and the project files, there's numerous project files and you may have all kinds of versions or you may, you know, accidentally delete something or this is just kind of a precaution because of the nature of how many different uh, things you could or how many different iterations of projects you may end up with. So that's pretty self-explanatory. Taking a look at the paths settings. So again, uh, this is all pretty well explained um, if you are a newer user, but there are a couple things in here in, as far as determining where your files go out of your design projects, out of the Strata collection projects, uh, or out of really any Reaper project essentially. So there's some default paths you can have set up. Um, a lot of times people will have, it's very common to have a default path set here as your render path. A lot of people will just set something as simple as having rendered and that would generate a new folder if one already doesn't exist there. Um, but we wanna make sure for this use case, we wanna make sure there's nothing in here that's empty because, and I'll show you, if I go to render something here, already baked into um, the render settings, when you open a Strata or Reaper project, there's a directory, There's already there already is cre created a directory just based on the settings that are saved with the projects. So we don't want to end up with a situation where, you know, you're going into, or you have your own settings here. Maybe you have something there. It'll just end up duplicating or doubling up, adding an additional folder that doesn't really need to be there. So the one thing that you should have is have this right here, where it says peaks. So this will create a peaks folder, which stores all the image files associated with representing the audio files inside of your Reaper project. So that is going to be um, at least helpful to keep those along with the actual project uh, directories and inside and moving alongside the project. Okay, going into the project menu. So what we're really going to be most concerned with, again, this is in the interest of making sure that you are safely keeping um, all the uh, the project versions that you may uh, wind up with, especially if you have, you know, Reaper uh, unexpectedly crashes, which I've hardly ever happened. But um, you want to make sure you have um, safe project file reference to relative path names, uh, overriding project file name, rename old project to with an extension of dot rpp dash back. So that's just to ensure that as you're, um, you know, overriding or making saves that there's a automatically a backup sort of created. Uh, keeping multiple versions. Okay, so that's just an auto save sort of feature. And you can set incrementally how often you would want that. Save to timestamped file and project directory. And then these are just kind of underneath this menu here. So there's kind of uh, are associated with the same function. And then also you can save to save the timestamp file to another directory. In this case, we would have a backups folder, which I can show you right inside here. So here I am inside my project folder and there's my backups. So there's all my project backups. It's kind of a little bit more organized that way. Go ahead and close that. And then also just at the bottom, make sure you have save undo history um, as well. So going to the media tab, let's take a look in here. So here's something you may want to have put new peak files in peak subfolder relative to media. So preferred to store newly created peak cache files in directory named peaks relative to the media file. So again, just some kind of, it's kind of a minimal thing, but, um, it will 
you know, be optimal for the number of waveforms and things that are actually being generated um, or that actually exist alongside these uh, these Reaper projects. So it's going to be the best, um, you know, user experience having some of these little settings checked. So one other thing that is also really definitely not obvious for um, for newer users, but uh, something to keep in mind working with uh, sub projects. So let me go ahead and open this back up here. Something that can happen um, that you want to make sure is turned off is by default, I'm going to go to the zoom in on the beginning of the session here. This one and two, the start and end markers, those actually determine if, um, in our case, there's nothing in between them. But in theory, if I were to have these, you know, like this, it's going to try, if I, um, if I, if I go back to my other tab, it's going to want to try to render that every single time I switch tabs. I have it turned off, but just so you can see, in here under, you have to right click the sub project tab and go to sub project rendering. And this is going to be, you want to have this, how I have it checked here, where it says do not automatically render sub projects. Now I'll show you what happens if you, you know, have it set up to default. When I switch back to my main project window, it's gonna ask me to save it anyways. And now look, it has to, it's gonna render essentially what I put between these start and end markers. Again, most of the these uh, Strata uh, sub projects aren't going to have that much material uh, in between those markers, if any at all, but um, it's gonna slow you down when you're switching tabs. So you can see it's gonna keep doing that and I'll have to do that every single time. It doesn't matter what I do. So every time it will do that. So again, very handy to have that turned off. All right, so that should just about do it as far as getting uh, everything that you need installed, or at least hopefully you now have a general awareness and you can rely on the documentation for further detail if needed. Make sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. That way you can see the forthcoming videos as they're released uh, and any important updates. If you leave some comments in the comment section, you know, suggestions or things you'd like to see. Uh, we'll try to answer those and try to monitor those as time goes on. You should be good to kind of move forward from this point. And, um, you know, we have a tour video. It's kind of spend a little bit more time looking at these these um, projects and the project structure. So if you kind of seeing what's on my screen and it's all a little overwhelming, that should also be helpful. And then we will continue with some practical design videos um, that will discuss linear and nonlinear uh, design workflows so you can get a practical idea of how maybe you would use these uh, these projects in your in your design workflow.